it. Let it benefit us. Let us learn. Let us reach new levels with this lesson, Lord Jesus, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for leading us through a prayer. Before you go off, would you please remind remind us of what we looked at last week very fast? Before you go off, you could remind us of what we looked at last week. Any person who can remind us? Liam. Liam, Liam, you're there? Yes, teacher. I'm there. Okay, hope you're fine. Yes. Did you do practice? Because I, I remember I left us with uh, some work, at least two to three paragraphs to produce an introduction, uh, and then at least two to three points. Yes, teacher, I did things fall apart. You did things yes. fall apart? Yes, teacher, I did the assignment, but I have some questions. Okay, maybe we can begin with those, then we we'll proceed with the lesson. Mm, teacher, so there's this part in literature where they ask you and they say, um, in a reasonable paragraph, explain what comes before this is extract. Okay, those are and, extracts. Mm. Yes, teacher, and in most of my papers, I fail that part. Oh, I, you, do not, you do not pass it. Yes, I do not pass it. And, and also in the essay part, there's, uh, yeah. there's somewhere where the teacher at school, when we were still at school, when we did assessments, then they bring back our papers. Mm. Then the teacher, there's somewhere where they told us to describe the character traits of a Okonko. Mm. So then as we were listing, I did, I wrote subtitles, then I did indented paragraphs, and I described the characters and all that. But then when the teacher brought back the papers, he said that avoid repetition, and he said that, um, for example, if, if I say Okonko is determined, then I also say Okonko is arrogant. The teacher said that if that is boring, that we're supposed to <laughs> change the... I'm quoting you, you said that it's no, 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 boring. No, I, I, I understand. It's actually right. What you said is right. I'm only laughing at you now, not in a bad way. Yes, okay, teacher. Yeah, but I lost a lot of marks there and I was asking for guidance. Okay. I'm sure this question is not just from Leah Malone. There are very many of us who fall in the same category. And that's why last week, I'll begin from the last question and then later on, I will go to the extract. Beginning with the last question, which is, how do you present your essay? How do you avoid monotony? Let's begin from monotony. What is monotony? Monotony is repetition of the same statement. You know, whenever you're starting your composition or when you're writing your essay, then you begin by saying, the boy is, the boy is, the boy is. And that's why in my last lesson, I emphasized and said, if we have three to four points, under character traits, after your introduction, you've told us who Okonko is, protagonist, whose life is under, maybe whose life is under tests or fate. You've said all those things, you've introduced him. Then you go down to character trait. If you have told us in your first paragraph that Okonko is portrayed as a strong-willed man, that is the first paragraph. You have used a starting statement of portrayed. The next paragraph tell us Okonko is a cultured man. The next statement, Okonko is brought as, out as short-tempered. The next statement you're starting another paragraph, Okonko is presented as now, those are different ways of starting a paragraph. By so doing, you're not repeating. Apart from mentioning Okonko is, that is now the proper noun. You can use a pronoun. He is also brought out as. So do not, 
do not use okonko okonko but you can use the proper noun you have okonko and then another one is you can even vary as the as the main character in a book okonko is also so you are trying to make sure that your essay is interactive it is not in a monotonous way starting with the same word okonko is okonko is that's how you can get rid of monotony avoid starting your statement with the same proper noun with the same statement with the same phrases that's what brings about repetition i guess that's why your teacher tells you that you are you're boring because monotony eventually when you can predict what i'm going to say next you cannot give me equal attention and as literature scholars we very much know that one of our key points one of the reasons we are still strong and needed is that we are masters of words we manipulate words we should be able to to, to captivate or catch people's attention through use of words so that's what we are saying avoid monotony by avoiding or doing away with repetition of the same statement over and over that's what brings about boredom or monotony for your teacher and eventually they are not pleased with you that aside the other question liam asked was under uh, uh, extracts what leads what comes after and what happens after so now when we when you look at extracts right now i am almost um unable to 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 set an extract for us here because we do very many different books but i guess the next lesson i will risk bringing at least from one one maybe let's say i will pull out a play and then maybe another time i pull out a novel extracts they can pick for you from what we call anywhere in the book but usually they, it's not anywhere they pick from fruitful areas areas that have a lot of content in terms of themes in terms of character traits in terms of lesson so usually those areas are rich the teachers do that the teachers are good with picking those areas now when they when they pull out an extract from wherever they have pulled there is what we call cause and effect themes i mean plots are we have two types of plots we have what we call a chronological plot it is organized in such a way that it is in order you know you have maybe let's say 1 2 3 4 that is chronology order then we have other plots which are which are the total opposite we have jumbled plots we have plots that are based on reason are we together maybe the beginning is the end the end is the beginning something like that so that's why we are saying that so however for us everything under plot is is built on what we call cause and effect for example why am i here today why am i teaching you today the reason you are learning now from home is because schools have closed why did schools close schools closed because there is covid 19 what caused covid 19 cause covid 19 is caused by a virus now that is what we call cause and effect so even our 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 plot for example let me liam i don't want to be speaking alone i hope liam is there liam are you listening to me yes teacher i'm listening okay now i want us to go to a point where okonko has been banished to go to mbata right yes aha uh -huh. now if we were to trace back we are now going to a point where okonko has just arrived in mbata yes. that is where the extract is beginning from or okonko is returning in fact let's pick the one from okonko is returning from mbata now he is in his village if you are to trace uh -huh. what what happened before you cannot only tell us things that happened in mbata no you have to tell us from the very first place where he makes a mistake during that barrio whose barrio was it uh, 
for good thing. Now, do you see that? That's why you failed the extracts. During the barrier, um, no, no, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm just telling to tell you that, uh, that that's one other thing I want to advise us students of literature. Literature is mm. reading. You must read and be familiar with the plot of the, of the, of the novel, of the play. If you are not familiar with the plot, eventually the plot will bully you. I'm only trying to show you that you cannot simply tell us that Okonko has spent maybe, how many years were they, eight? How many, how many years did he spend in Mbata? So they were eight. Are you sure? Um, mm, let me take Tracy. Tracy, come and save Liam is dying. Tracy? They were seven years. They were seven years. Liam, you see an addition of one and you're buying my side. That's why I can, tr I can trick you and know that you do not know the plot. Now, however, for me, I want to take you back to question approach. My issue is once you have been given an extract, look for the original cause, how we have reached where we are. Why is Okonko returning to Mbata, I mean to, to Mofia? Where has he been in? Okay, let's bring something even more close. There is, there is a village uh, council meeting called, they are threatening the people of Mbaino. What is the cause? Aine. Oh, Liam, uh, let me call Tracy this time. I, I, uh, Liam, just listen in case you have a contribution, you can always put up your hand. Tracy. Yes, sir. What was causing the war between Mbaino? Okay, let's say, let, before you, let me, let me rephrase it. Let me even take you further. Yes. Yeah. That Okonko has been sent as an emissary to Mbaino. In fact, that is even too close. Let me take to a point where Okonko has returned from Mbaino with, 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 with uh, two people. Can you name for me those people? Tracy, can you name for me the people Okonko returns with from Mbaino? Um, he returned with two kids. He uh -huh. had in exile. Who and who? One was Nuofia. One was called Nuofia. Are you sure? No. Yeah. He was called Mofia. And um, the other Funa. that is free. No, Ikeme Funa was the first son of Okonkwo. Mm -hmm. Ikeme Funa was the first son of Okonkwo. He, he turned to what? To Christianity. And he was mm -hmm. sent away by his dad. His father. Oh, kids, his father. Okay, his father. The yeah, kids, because we, we oh, penalize. Like... Yes, sir. Um, mm. The kid who came back with from exile, one was called Morphia. Not exile. I'm talking about Mbaino. 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 From Mbaino. Not Mbata. Which village, yeah. which village, which village does Umofia want to attack uh, at the beginning? Uh -huh. yeah. um, it was uh, that they requested for to sacrifice in, in what the lad and the virgin they got from Baino after the, the people of Baino had killed the daughter of Umofia. Uh, whose wife was it? Um, it was, um, I'm not sure. Let <laughs> me first check. Yes. Now, it takes me back to one thing. All of us need to read our plot. Our plot is shaky mm -hmm. and very shaky for that case. Now, what I want to try to explain is as you come back, you look for what you're looking for. You try to look for cause and effect. What has made Okonko to bring these people 
these people to his home, the girl, especially the boy rather, the girl was given to Odu. But what about, what about the, the boy who he brings to his home? How does this boy come to stay at Okonkwo's place? So you must tell us that the people of Mbaino kill, uh, kill Udo's wife or kill a, a clan's member of Umofia. Umofia sit for a meeting in the clan. Uh, they sit for a clan meeting and decide that it's either they give them they give them uh, two people, a, a wife to replace the dead one and a child and a boy. Otherwise, they would go to war. Okonko is sent. Okonko comes back with this boy. The girl is given to the man and the boy is kept at Okonko's place. Now, I have been able to trace from the beginning how Okonko, how the boy comes to stay at Okonko's place. Actually, even Tracy is very wrong. The boy is Ikemefuna. The boy is Ikemefuna. All of you, your plot is very shaky. Tracy. Where is Tracy? 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 Tracy, can you hear me? Okay, so people, please go and read read the plot very well. So I don't know if I've helped Liam. Liam, very fast, where are you? Tracy. Yes, sir. There is a quotation in this book that the boy calls you father. Do not take hand yes. in his killing. Yes. If you go to chapter seven, chapter six, you will be able to see that boy very well. He's everywhere. The boy Okonko brings from yes, Mefuna. So please read yes, your plot sir. very well. Now I go to Liam. Liam, where are you? By show of hands. I hope the rest are also facing the same problems with with uh, with Liam and other people, if you have, so I don't know if I've helped you. I did not hear the other question. Is there a question I've not answered? No, teacher. It's about yeah, you've answered everything, but about the paragraph in the mm. question, they say that in a reasonable paragraph. Now, <laughs> what is the reasonable oh, paragraph? Oh yes. Now, a reasonable paragraph has what we call character traits of a paragraph. That is state, explain, give an example. That is what we call a reasonable paragraph. We cannot tell you that three, four lines or seven lines, but it's about how you can be able to explain in, in your own good words. I have an example here of what we are going, what you're asking. I have it in terms of a theme. Last week we looked at character traits. I thought I had given you an highlight of how we do that. So this week I thought I would look at themes generally because there are so many aspects of the novel we have to look at. Then maybe next week we shall look at character role. I hope some of you have heard that. I don't know if your teachers had already told you about character role and then the relevance of a title. If, if Those are the things I want to, to familiarize you with as we keep developing our literature skills. So a reasonable, a reasonable paragraph, Liam, is not measured by, 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 by length, but it's measured by quality of the work in there. That the first line should be stating the point. For example, if we're looking at Okonko, you tell me that Okonko is portrayed as a short-tempered character, full stop. Now I'm explaining. I'm now writing my explanation under that stated point. I will write and say that in the novel, Okonko has zero tolerance, zero tolerance for weak people. No wonder he hates his own father. Are we together? You're talking about being yes. short-tempered. Then you tell us that during the, during the village meeting, <laughs> Okonko, Okonko calls a man, a woman. He, tell, he reminds one of the men that this meeting is for is for men, not women. Simply because what did the man do to Okonko? Just 
As Okonko was still talking, he interrupted. Then Okonko said that this meeting is for me. So that that's what we are saying is short tempered. He does not want anyone or the other one. When his wife, Ikwefi, I think it was Ikwefi, who who yeah. who reminds him that he's carrying a gun which does not shoot. What does he do? Due to his short temper, he shoots at her, though he misses. But that is what we are saying, that is being short tempered. He also does not entertain his son's weakness and therefore he parts ways with his son based on his short temper. He does not wait for his son to mature. He wants the boy to mature so fast. No wonder he takes pride in Enzinma more than his own, his own son. So that's what we are saying, you explain you give an example. So in your explanation, you'll be explaining what short-temperedness means. And then in your example, you tell us where you see him being short-tempered. Or you can give an example and explain that this shows that Okonko does not tolerate. So you can state a point, give an example, then explain. That this shows Okonko is not very patient with people or Okonko has zero room for weak people. That's what we mean by a reasonable paragraph. You state, explain, give an example. Yes. Thank you, teacher. Teacher, okay. you asked me You're about welcome. the assignment. Yes, did you do it? Yes, I did. So am I okay. supposed to read uh, I, or... Um, in the last five or two minutes of the, of the, of the, I'm going to leave my number here. There are people I want to be able to help even outside class. So I will leave my number here. Or oh, actually, if you're seeing the first part, part, part of what I'm displaying, my WhatsApp number should be, let me show you here. I have my WhatsApp yeah, number. I can get it from your group. Okay. So you send me the work. I can always be able to help you in an outside class at any time. Yes, teacher, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we go back to we go back to our our work today. Today I want to look at thematic, thematic uh, development, thematic uh, anything to do with themes today. We want to be able, can we be able to extract a theme? Which major themes do we have anyway in these books of ours? Themes. But then the common questions when they say discuss the major theme in the novel or discuss the major themes, or they can tell you discuss the theme of tradition, discuss the theme of maybe culture and tradition in any book that maybe you have come across. So today we want to be able to see how do we develop that essay, how do we go about such a passage, or rather how do we go about such a question. So, um, therefore, our lesson objectives will be based on our topic. We must be able to identify a theme in a text. We should also know how to state the theme in a paragraph, explain and give relevant examples. In short, we should learn how to write an essay in literature. It is the dominant question that disturbs people in and out. So maybe before I even go and give you my explanation of what a theme is, at least you can remind me what is a theme? I see here people who can, Aine, Dominic, Claire, Kyle. What do you remember? What is your explanation? What is a theme? When someone says the major themes, what is this person meaning? before we even go and look at the different themes in the different books we have learned. So you raise your hand and then you let me know. Yes, Claire. Claire, you may speak. A theme, a theme refers to the topic being discussed. In literature. Okay, thank you, Claire. Liam? Yes, teacher. 
a theme is a subject of talk in a piece of writing mm. in literature. Okay. So when we go back to literature and we want to make meaning of some of these things, we need to know that every author, every writer, let it be you and me, when you're writing a letter, let it be a letter of apology, let any form of letter, all the pieces of writing have an unintended message. So authors embed their message in the actions of their characters, the reactions of their characters, in the resolutions or in the decisions of their characters. For example, if my main character, Okonko, is choosing to die or is choosing to fight the ways of the whites, the author is trying to communicate something. When the author chooses to take us to Umofia, which is a rural setting untouched by the Western civilization, the author is trying to communicate to us the culture, the ways of the, these, these people, the Igbo people in Nigeria. The, the author is trying to communicate to us the structure of this community. So these themes are not directly put there, but as we read, the way the author is directing us. For example, those who have read the voice of the people, you get to know that the playwright uses a female character to fight for something. The fact that he's using a woman to fight a man in a community which regards only men, then there is something is communicating. The fact that there is somebody fighting to save a forest, then there is something. The fact that we have bosses who are misusing the money of the people, then there is something is communicating. So that's how we can be able to know that the author is trying to communicate a theme. And a theme must be dominant. We should see it throughout the novel. Let it not be in only one page, but we should be able to see the theme in first chapter, second chapter, third chapter, it should cut across the novel. Let us not pick themes based on ideas. That is what, that's one thing I can hint on before we continue. I see people's hands up. Sorry, Aine. Excuse me, teacher. You're excused. Like, <clears throat> like you collect me. Like here, I mean, like to me, a theme. The way I can describe it, mm. a theme, like a theme in poetry, refer to a mm. call or corners of the poet, which, like, which are delivered from the subject matter of the poem. Is it? I beg your pardon. Like themes in poetry, mm. refer to call corners in the poem, in the poet, mm. which are delivered from the subject matter of the poem. What do you mean by, is it, did you say core corners? Calls, core corners, yeah. Um, I'm not getting the word. C-H-O-R-E oh. and corners. Yes. Okay, that is all literature you're using. Yeah. Because, yes, we're looking at the, the, the major interest in his piece of writing. What is that person communicating in his in his poem, in his uh, novel, in his in his play, let's say um, this, this like uh, my plays that we are doing for us this side of voice of the people. What is the person communicating? Like, mm. like in this voice of the people about mm. Nasula. Not, Nasula was the mother of or Sula. Sula, the that, daughter. That is not voice of the people. Nasirombi. Oh. You want and to Nas mean Nasirombi. Uh, Nasura is in, uh, in, in, in the old books which we are not doing now. Okay, I remember. Uh, Cowary of Hope. Oh. Yes, but you're talking about Nas Nasirombi. Uh, you remind me about some name in Voice of the People, I remember. 
<laughs> we have Nasiru, <laughs> that is really funny. We have Nasiru Ombi, uh, she's fighting boss. We have Sibo, we have Ndondo, we have the oh. mother's front. Those are the people we have there. Okay. Mm. It's, it, it's unfortunate that you're asking me to remind you. Usually it is me who is supposed to ask you to remind me, but it's okay. I guess we have overstayed at home. If the government is hearing us, these are the effects the government should know. Our children are even forgetting characters. Speaking of which, before I go away from it, please, let's take care of ourselves. The rate of teenage pregnancy is alarming and I, I, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shaming. So let's, let's keep ourselves safe, both girls and boys. You don't want to be fathers and mothers before your time. That is a by the way, but a very important by the way. Let's keep ourselves sane and in check. Okay, so yes, subject being discussed. So I agree with you. So today I want us to look at, in all the books we have done, you know, let's say things fall apart, uh, the return of Mugofu, Grief Child, uh, The Pearl, you know, uh, Mema, whatever book you are doing, The Heart Soothers, and all these books, we are interested in seeing those major themes. So also a reminder to us, do you know the major themes in the books that you are doing? For example, those who are doing things fall apart. What are the major themes that you can come up with in things fall apart by show of hands? Those who are doing things fall apart. Now here I'm trying to make sure we help everyone. I cannot narrow to one book, but we keep helping everyone from Promise? Yes, teacher. Could you at least give me four major themes in things fall apart? Teacher, we have change. Change. We have fate. We have fate. Um, we have culture. Culture. Teacher, is culture the same as tradition? Culture and tradition is one thing. Okay, then we have religion. We have religion. Mm, Particularly which religion? Um, teacher, we have four. They are, they are culture religion. <laughs> COVID has done more harm than good. I need to go and talk to the government directly. Okay, thank you. You have at least a wide scope of the themes, which is good. Shall polish them here and there. Benjamin, which book did you, are you doing? Things fall apart. Uh, I want another book. No, I don't have another. You have only done one book so far. You are in trouble. You are in trouble. Aine, now Aine is going to. It'll tell me of Kawari uh, of Hope. Aine? Ye yes. Don't tell me Kawari of Hope. Tell me any other book and the themes under it. About? Heart Soothers. Have you read Heart Soothers? No, we, all, we read about Return of Mugofu. Uh -huh. Only Return and of Mugofu? Yes. Give ah. me and it was supposed to be automatically promoted. I hear. I also don't know. You must and, be. But what have you read on your own at school? What I mean at home? Which books are you people reading? Yeah. Oh, you stopped there. And about this, this, this point over Shakespeare, this, the, the, the book of Shakespeare. Shakespeare. The, Mar the Merchant of yeah, Venice. Yeah, The Merchant of Venice. <laughs> This is interesting. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Please read, 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 read a lot. Let me take another hand, Tracy. Yes, Tracy. Um, hard soothers. Hard soothers. Give me four, five themes. Um, a theme of love. Love. Revenge. 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 
Yes. Mm. Um, uh, sorry. Pardon? Now, this is the teachers. We have teachers. We have seen days. Do you people realize how much work our teachers have to do for us when you return to school? You people are not reading. You have even forgotten the, the, the things we told. What is happening? Hatsudas, for those who have done Hatsudas, I expect you to, to, that is a very simple book for us to master. It, you should be able to remember in and out, you know? Some of these things are really very simple. We have betrayal, we have injustice, we have dictatorship, all those things are there, you know, under voice of the people, corruption and greed. So what I'm trying to let remind you that all the books we have read have different themes. So today we want to see with the themes we know and those we have forgotten that we must remind ourselves, we should be able to write an essay because regardless of the book, the common questions usually are under themes they give you one theme and they tell you, discuss the theme of, for example, under, under um, things fall apart, discuss the theme of change. Under voice of the people, discuss the theme of corruption or dictatorship. Under maybe much and of Venice, discuss the theme of love. So all these books, they will give you a similar question. But how do we go about that question? So today, we shall hold the knowledge of our question. Maybe Lois, Lois might complain that I'm not picking. Lois? Lois? Yes, sir. Which book? Uh, I just wanted to say the things in the heart to that. Oh, but I've already mentioned them. You can run through them very fast. Yeah, I, I got it. Okay, thank you. So let's use the knowledge of those books to make our uh, essays on our own, but also together with me today here. So what do I have here? I tried to explain what a theme is. That is the most dominant idea in the play stroke novel. Different plays and novels have different themes depending on the intentions of the author or the, the writer. So students must read all books and discover what the writer intends to communicate. That is your role as a student to discover what theme the author has for you in that book. If, if it was one particular school, I would be able to, 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 to read with you one novel at a time. But here now, since we are a collection, I will use the knowledge of the fact that all novels have themes and all books have the same set questions. It, the only thing that changes is that your examples will come from your book. So that is the knowledge I want us to borrow today here. So for me here, how can we introduce a theme in literature? I picked things fall apart simply because I, I, there's no particular reason anyway. I just picked things fall apart. Last week I used, um, I think last week I used either Hatsuda's or Voice of the People, one of those. Today, maybe next week I will try Grief Child. I'll keep varying different books to handle different aspects to be able to help everyone. So if I'm introducing a theme in a book, particularly uh, in the book of Heart of, I mean, uh, uh, Things Fall Apart, this is how, if the question was discuss maybe the major themes or discuss the theme of maybe culture, you know, how would I go about that theme? That's what today we want to look at. So that's why today I chose to say, I would introduce mine as you see it on the screen. That's how I would be able to introduce my theme. And the things fall apart. I hope you can see my screen and see how I have been able to introduce my theme. But in the novel Things Fall Apart, the author explores many themes 
including African traditional order. So my theme here is African traditional order. That is the theme I am introducing. If the question says, discuss the major theme, or rather discuss the theme of tradition and or African tradition as my theme, this is how I would introduce that theme. Even if it were discussed the theme of change, I would also make sure <clears throat> it fits in in its own way. So I would say in the novel things fall apart, the author explores themes including African traditional order. He communicates clearly that the African communities are organized with values and morals, but later broken up by the external forces. Remember the book is things fall apart. So I'm okay to mention that however, things are broken up by external forces. These are divided, what are those? <clears throat> the communities, these are divided into clans and homophia is one of them, which the novel focuses on. This is my introduction for the theme, African tradition. I hope you're able to see. There are many themes, but for me, I picked African tradition, especially its order. Because in this community, the way it is, you really see how they're organized. Before the whites came, there is nothing we did not have. We had hospitals. Now you're asking, where were the hospitals? The traditional healers. We had the, the law what now they call the courts of law. Our courts of law were the village clans, th those, those communal sittings where people would sit and judge who is in wrong. In things fall apart, it's not, it's not a mistake. We usually see it. Every time people sit down, we had, we had sports. Wrestling was there. There is no element that African tradition did not have. We had everything beautifully placed there. So when whites come and claim that they, 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 they brought order into Africa, that is not true. Africa literally took order to, to the whites because for us, everything is here. We, we, our systems were known. So the theme here is African traditional order. How was Africa organized? How was Mafia particularly organized? We had clan leaders. We had the Igugus. Each Igugu representing a certain sect and each Igugu having a ladder of supremacy. So that's what we are saying, that the theme there we are discussing is of African tradition and I have introduced it. Then I go to my first essay, my first paragraph. What would it look like? Now I am discussing the theme of African tradition. What would my first paragraph look like? Now, when you're discussing, the, now you look for places in the novel that bring out the order of things or that talk about the Africanness of the book or of the Umofia people. So my first one here, I say in a, in a paragraph, Okonko, the main character, comes from a mafia clan. Remember, we're talking about order. So these are organizing orders. The clans are sometimes at war, yet intermarriages also occur. For example, the issues of Udo's wife almost sends the two clans into war. That is Mbaino and mafia. Within the clan, however, there is unity and solidarity. For instance, when the able-bodied men turn out in thousands at the marketplace, prepare to, prepare to defend Umofia and avenge its dead. They are prepared to fight for the honor of Umofia. I don't know if you are understanding up to this point. If you have a question, please put up your hand. Do you understand how I'm trying to explain or what I am trying to show you in terms of arranging our paragraphs or from the introduction 
to stating a point, to explaining and giving examples. If you have a question, please ask. Okay, I guess that is a sign that you have understood. If you have not understood, please ask. Other people are doing recipe for disaster. That is not in the syllabus. Recipe for disaster should be a senior two book. It's not in our syllabus. I gave you the set books this year. Recipe for disaster is not one of them. Lois? Yes, sir. I no. was thinking how many paragraphs should we explain a theme? A, a theme, one paragraph is enough. Each, mm -hmm. each for example, no, 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 don't misinterpret me. I am saying, for I don't know if you're, you're asking me how many paragraphs should I, if the question is asking you to discuss one theme, is that what you're asking me? I am meaning under like, they have said discuss the themes in the novel. Then for you discussing a theme, like this one you're discussing, then hmm. you, how many paragraphs do you put there? Two or one? Oh, no, 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 wait, wait. There are two things I'm going to explain. Now, sometimes they can, even if they told you that discuss the themes, usually the, it, is not, it is not possible for the teacher to just say discuss all the themes because you cannot finish. So the teacher usually says discuss maybe the two major themes or discuss at least two major themes. Now, if they give you to discuss two major themes or three, but I'm very sure there is no teacher who can make you to discuss all of them because there are many you at least make sure reasonably you, you write for us. I don't know, I cannot limit you and say maybe a page because for us in literature in all level, a standard essay is one and a half to two pages. Okay. So you must make sure you plan your work in such a way that it fits within two pages. Whenever you write three pages, just know that you are being irrelevant. In, in A level, we expect a standard essay to be one and a half to two pages. So make sure that at least you balance. If you can write for us four, four paragraphs and they fit within their plus an introduction and a conclusion, I am okay with you. However, if they're telling you to discuss the major theme or discuss the theme of African traditional order, you must write for us a full essay of one and a half to two pages. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Okay, thank you. You don't seem convinced. No, but they told us eh, we mm. should write a theme in one paragraph. But, and we wait, write wait, in... wait. <laughs> when you're handling which question, can you state for me the question? Uh, discuss the theme in the play Heart Soda. The themes. And the themes. Uh, discuss two themes. Under one theme, like the theme of uh, betrayal, you discuss mm -hmm. you need one paragraph, and of which is going to be one a half page. Uh, my dear, I don't think you were attentive. I am very sure there is no teacher who can tell you to do what you have just told me. Because a, a, you cannot write a half a page and it's just one paragraph. So for you, two pages, just four paragraphs. That does not make sense a bit. That, that, that will be, that will not be, uh, that it's not right. I don't know how to say you are not right. Uh, maybe let me hear from Primrose. Is there any other person who has the same complaint? Primrose. <coughs> Primrose, is that what yes. the teacher told you? Have you been listening to me and Lois? Yes. Is no, that what the teacher us, told you? No, first our teacher told us to just write a rich, a rich and fleshy paragraph. 
Yes, but not, I have a page, a paragraph. Yeah, she didn't tell us to do that. And that wouldn't make much sense. Mm. So teacher, I was, I, was, I was asking a question. Eh? Like, okay, like I thought when they tell you like to discuss the theme of tradition, I thought maybe you bring out the, you bring out the events in the novel that discuss that discuss about tradition. Now, like for example, when I say the New Yam Festival. Yeah. Now, for me, look at the theme. My theme is not African tradition. The theme here is African traditional order. Ah, oh, okay. The, the way it is arranged. However, if you state yours, because many people state their themes differently, are we together? But mm. eventually you'll find yourself discussing the same idea, the idea of African tradition. Okay. You get, for example, the New Yam Festival. Yes, that is very true. It is one of those things, celebration, celebration of, fest celebration of the festive season is one of those. It is still the African order. When do you celebrate it? It is either okay. celebrated at the beginning of the new season or at the end of the new, uh, at the end of the old season, something like that. Do you see that? So those are all orders. I, I've just picked one example to explain to you. Okay, teacher. Mm, so you, it is very fine. So students, when we are stating points, I could perhaps also have another example under the same thing, under the theme, and we can we can go on. Are we together? So let us not be uh, let us be flexible. But I realize that for you to write a fleshy paragraph like this one, you ought to be knowledgeable. For example, people had even forgotten whose wife had been murdered that was pushing Mbaino and Omofia into war. People had forgotten that they brought Ikemefuna from Mbaino to Mafia, and he had to stay in Okonkwo's homestead. So those are the things you need to, to be able to, to learn. Then you also tell us, how, what are other things under the order, African order? What, then you tell us that the Igbo society is a patriarchal one in which decisions, decision making involves only men that is the African, the Africanness of this society, that it's only men who make decisions in this one. How do we see, you go ahead and explain to us that it is, that it is a society with no centralized political structure, no single, no single ladder in this society, the elders lead, especially the oldest male members of the family. We're talking about within the family. It is only men. That's why whenever Okonko's wives try to make noise or try to decide, when Ikwefi asks him when he returns with Ikemefuna, that where is this? Is it she asks, I think, about the whereabouts of the boy? Okonko tells her, when did it become your role to ask questions? So in this society, it is only men who make decisions. So in short, you'll be able to tell us how African society, especially this particular Igbo society or the Umofian clan, how is it arranged? All those celebrations and the fights, the religious beliefs and concerns, the issues of marriage customs, how are they? You should be able to, to tell us. How do they administer their justice? That is how, what we talk about the African order. So of course, for the beginning, for, for, for us, the young ones, I know you will be learning, but the more we practice this on our own, you know, we become better with, with time. So let us uh, do that. So there could be other themes under things fall apart, the supernatural, we have Christianity, we have colonialism. Of course, the major theme is change that change is inevitable. No matter what happens, we have to change. That not everything for rain is bad, that not everything traditional is, is good. So we, we are looking at themes. Are you learning? So how many paragraphs is 
okay, are needed for a theme. I cannot tell you that write a fixed number of paragraphs, but I've told you your essay must be between one and a half to two pages. That is the standard essay. At least you, you can have more than maybe two pages, but at least don't have less than a half a page. No, I mean, don't have less than one and a half because it means you have not done well right there. So that's what I'm trying to communicate today here. Do we have any questions under themes? Please ask. Dominic, Kyle, Liam, have you understood? Do you have a question you would like to ask, particularly under themes, under stating a theme, explaining? Do you have a question that disturbs you? Or is there anything you'd like to know within this area? Okay, Liam has understood. So can I assume that we have understood today's, today's lesson? So as usual, my, my task is here on your own. In the book that you have read, pick out the two, or at least, yes, maybe one major theme. Introduce the theme. After introducing the theme, uh, write for us at least, for example, now under here, for those who are doing things fall apart, Handle the theme of change. Introduce for me this and write at least two to three paragraphs, sample paragraphs that can explain the theme of change, where it is found in the book, who is involved and how is it here and there. So that's what I'm interested in, in seeing. Promise? Um, teacher, isn't colonization part of change? Um, now here, change is, no, not at all. Uh, this one is a result of the other. We are looking at change. If you look at who is Okonkwa's best friend? Mm. Who keeps visiting Okonkwa in Mbata? I don't remember. Obirika. Obirika. Mm -hmm. What are some of the practices, even before, even before, um, even before the, the whites come in, Obirika has already started telling his friend certain things are changing, even before the whites come. Certain things are changing. For example, even before the whites come in, we realize that Okonko, Okonko's son, is different from Okonko's daughter. But Okonko does not accept that fact. So change of opinion, change of perspective of view of things, Okonko has failed to change. Uh, so we are looking at change here. There is a change that is internal. There is change even within the African culture that there is need for African culture to, 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 to advance even before the whites come in. For example, many people used to even wonder before the whites come, why we throw away twins in homophilia. So the change here is, is even before the whites come and after they come, even after they have all perhaps left. So change and colonialism, colonialism is different. To colonize is to rule over. And this one only happens after the whites have come in, the missionaries, are we together? The missionaries come in and they are dominating in terms of ideology, in terms of schools, in terms of the law. That is where colonization comes. So you can separate them. They can stand side by side. However, different teachers state theirs in a different way. The whole point is for someone to be able to, to discuss. That is what I encourage us to do, to be able to discuss the theme the way it is. If you can separate, you can do for me colonization or change and Christianity. Those can be different. Okay. No. Um, I think that is, we come to the end of our lesson. And I, I want to encourage us so much to always attend, but to read on our own. 
it doesn't make sense for me to come here and I'm um, to remind you like the way someone said, teacher, remind me, remind me of this character. I think that is not a very beautiful thing for a teacher to hear. So it is really encouraged or encourage, uh, uh, a good thing for a student to be able to read. <laughs> I thank you for the update. Otherwise, that's what I had for us today. Thank you for attending. God bless you all. Thank you, teacher Larry. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the lesson. Thank you, teacher. So grateful. Um, Thanks. Welcome. Thank you,